I don't know how people in 1917 Tennessee actually spoke. What I do know is that I don't a be a caring a for a the way other a characters a be a speaking. But maybe you did. You were Scott. Yes, we're talking about Sergeant York, where uh, Gary Cooper plays said Sergeant Alvin York in this 1941 biographical outing. York was a dirt poor farmer hailing from a a village in rural, rural Tennessee that's just to the south of the middle of nowhere, struggling to provide for his family on the poor farmland, hoping one day to earn enough to buy some rather less stone-based farmland. He's a rambunctious soul, if by rambunctious you mean violent alcoholic, but a sudden conversion to religion sees him stow away his jackass tendencies and become an upright citizen, steered by Walter Brennan's Pastor Rosier Pyle. However, Pastor Pyle's radical interpretation of Christianity, that being, maybe we shouldn't kill each other, will cause a problem when the US of A starts conscription for the army for World War I. York attempts to register as a conscientious objector, but is countered by arguments that killing for your country is a good and righteous thing, actually, and something you should all be ready to do, particularly any, any men in the audience of this initial release. During the war, York is the main part of a heroic action that beggars belief, but nonetheless appears to actually be true, overrunning a machine gun net that has his platoon pinned near single-handedly and capturing around 130 enemies. Hailed and decorated as a hero, he does not want to personally profit from his actions and instead devotes the rest of his life to improving the lot of his native rural Tennessee. Now, I did not know a great deal by which I mean anything about either Sergeant Jock, the film, or the person, so this more than held my attention throughout. Uh, for a contemporary reference, think Hacksaw Ridge, except told in an era where fragmentation grenades make people go oof and fall to their knees, rather than Ridge's method of making people fall to their knees by reducing their shins to splinters. Cooper plays everything stoically enough, although on a personal level, York's character gets less interesting as the film goes on. He's certainly more interesting as a young thug than as a military man, but there's a medium amount of shrift given to the discussion about conscientious objector status that brings up some interesting points. I'm not convinced it answers any of them, but at least it's a far more considered look at them than I'd expect from Hollywood given the timing of the film. Uh, now, this was well regarded at the time, although it's not the best film in, an S in any aspect from 1941 by a long chalk, given the likes of The Maltese Falcon or Suspicion or some little indie flick called Citizen Kane, but at the very least I'm not outraged by putting it in the same sentence as those other films. It's a solid story, solidly told, so a solid recommendation from the So Solid crew. Uh, yes, I take on board your point about accents. Not a strong point of this film, or indeed films generally of this era. Um, but yes, other than that, I found this reasonably captivating to, to watch. It doesn't get any better either with the accents when we meet the British soldiers and their English accents, which were convincing. Yes. <laughs> uh, although I think uh, in terms of accents, it's probably Joan Leslie that comes out worst here because she's just awful and just so stilted. And I, and I don't know if yeah. I couldn't decide whether she was stilted because she was trying to do this weird accent that they put an A in front of every second word um, <laughs> and go, Am I thinking, am I going to? It's driving me crazy. Yeah. But she was so stilted again. I don't know if it was because she just couldn't act or whether like that really weird speech. Just yeah. make it difficult for her to act. Um, yeah. But let's go, let me just confirm something here. You think this film had an agenda in 1941? <laughs> hmm. One of the the curious things about this film, uh, and you used the the uh, appropriate for the character, but it's not appropriate for the actor word a couple of times, which is talking about Sergeant York as a young man. Uh, yeah. And. <laughs> I'm not sure how old York was. Um. Older than you might expect. At the start of this film, he's he should be about 25, I think, off the top of my head, um, which I was expecting, given his actions, to be more like, you know, 17 or 18. But no, he was relatively old, but not as old as Gary Cooper. Yeah, that's, at that point. <laughs> it's very hard to tell because Gary Cooper was 40 when he shot yeah. this. And I'd like you to direct you back to, um, for not for the first time and not for the last time in this episode to for the first time around, not the last time, to my comments and introduction about the city miles on people in the early 20th century. Um, <laughs> Gary Cooper's 40. Looks like he could be 60 yeah. um, by modern standards. Um, and he's playing this person who's acting like a rowdy teenager. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I unfortunately didn't enjoy this film. More than anything, it has, apart from well, the, the accents, well, the way of speaking was really... Uh, getting on my nerves, but I was just bored by it. I certainly take your point, Scott, that he's a lot more interesting in the early going. 
Hmm. But it's just, I don't know, I just I didn't find it very interesting. And it's weird too, it's a, and I, I knew about Sergeant York as having been this great military hero, but I never really knew why. I was just, I'd been vaguely aware of the name for a long time. So I was, you know, I had some interest in finding out what it was all about. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, can we get to it? It's like one hour, 37 minutes before he gets to France. Yeah. One hour, 37, before he actually goes to war. Like, yeah, okay. And then his actions while heroic, uh, have more or less sawed all to do really with his incredible sharpshooting which was played up so much in the rest of the film yeah and it's like yeah but that kind of didn't matter what happened at the end um <laughs> which seems a strange emphasis to put on it uh, yeah i think it definitely spends a bit too long with the the start of his character where it's actually not that interesting for the first what 45 minutes i think there's a really interesting sort of sub discussion about conscience objective status um particularly in you know regards conscription uh um, yeah it it gives that valid but basically if you, if you cut out almost all of the first act of this film it'd be a lot tighter and a lot um a lot more enjoyable i think for 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 audiences but uh yeah uh, yeah it is not the, the, the most um swiftly paced of the films we'll talk yeah. about today by any stretch of the imagination I mean th- there's some interesting character beats earlier on like he's gonna he's like you know he's a bit of a rowdy guy um, and he kind of straightens up and flies right but I think the problem is while I actually enjoyed Gary Cooper's performance a lot more here than in Pride of the Yankees if you remember yeah. we covered that a few years ago Scott I really didn't yes. care for him in that I thought he was very wooden I, thought he was I a was lot thinking more, of that yeah I thought he was a lot more natural in this yeah he's got a bit of that kind of and he was cast in similar roles too he's got that, a bit of that James Stewart kind of G-Shucks persona to him a wee yeah. bit which means it's very difficult to buy him as being the Hellraiser yeah uh, so can it, so it works for the second half of the character and doesn't work for the first half <laughs> and then you've got like there's little bits too like he, he suddenly finds religion and he gets swindled by this old get of a um land salesman um and then decides that it's providence and i'm swearing at the screen at this point like get bent providence (laughs) Uh, so yeah i mean it's not bad Uh, although it really does drag a bit just i was a bit bored by it um and i didn't think garku was particularly well cast and not that he was bad just uh, for that character i didn't think it worked and also you know he's like 50 years too old for it (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah um i was perhaps going to mention right any time religion appears in any film, it immediately puts my back up because it's religion in a film and I'm so mm-hmm. avowedly, yeah. I'm so <laughs> devoutly atheist. Um, but this was perhaps the one time where I saw a discussion of religion go on and I thought, you know what, that's actually an interesting take and not offensive. And I yeah. quite agree with that. I mean, it's something, you know, say what you will about religion as a means of control, but the, the way that it takes someone who's um, clearly on a, you know, a dangerous, alcoholic, violent path and uses that religion, straightens him up, makes him a better person. It's like, uh, that's actually one of the more interesting aspects you could talk about. Um, Providence, that bit aside, yeah, can, uh, that's the stupid part of religion, hearing, <laughs> reading its ugly head. But between that and the bit about conscientious, conscientious observer uh, status, it's one of the more interesting discussions of religion I've seen in a film. It's one yeah. of the least offensive bits. It makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I liked it on that basis, so I perhaps was giving it a bit more credit than it perhaps deserves on that basis, but yeah, it did appeal to me on that level. Yeah, uh, I don't think the film deals with it particularly well, particularly because it's kind of, it's undercut by this presumably meant to be patriotic speech by the major at one point explaining American history and stuff like American <laughs> yeah, so history is not something good. you want to base any moral standing on at yeah, all. Exactly. Not, not good. Um, <laughs> also, it says here you can own black people. <laughs> <laughs> not that you'd see any. They're not in the yeah. film. <laughs> If they were around, you could own them, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, I I have exactly the same problem. The virgin comes up at all and I'm immediately just, like, angry. Um, <laughs> I'm not an atheist because that's like calling myself an atheist or an a-dragonist. Um, <laughs> I frequently call myself both of those things. I'll have you know. <laughs> but, uh, but, yes, I actually thought that, that the idea at the beginning and um, Walter Brennan's pastor was reasonably sensibly held to like, like I think Tennessee's in the Bible Belt and you think it would be kind of real kind of yeah. Southern Baptist thing or kind of Bible something like and it's not actually it's gentler than that and it's more about a basic philosophy and stuff and while when people are referring to the, the Bible as any sort of source of truth it immediately mm. makes me angry but 
Uh, yeah, as you said, Scott, it's like that's actually fairly sensitively held or handled. Mm. Um, mm. I just think the second half of the film throws it away entirely because of that speech by the major. And then it's like, well, at least with Hacksaw Ridge, um, Andrew Garfield's character, whatever his name was, I forget, he, he's not carrying a gun. It's like, I totally guess it, but I'll try and save people's lives. And I kind of saw where they were going with, with York saying that by, you know, shooting people, he was in a way saving lives. But yeah, mm. I, I don't think that's quite the same as, you know, tending to the injured, you know, just like, yeah, you, yeah. you are killing people. And especially, it's one of those things, and you see it a lot, it's like about uh, how can anybody um, be um, in trouble with the lords on their side and stuff like that. Do you not think the people on the other side believe that too? I think it's <laughs> always bothered me. Like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, it's like, it kind of brings up, like, interesting, quite sensitively uh, handled, as you say, uh, and it's like, you know conscientious objection thinking and it's wrong and it's, it rings a wee bit hollow given how suddenly he found religion and for all that the film drags that bit kind of happens almost instantly yes. and then suddenly he's this um, this really staunch Christian so it's, that's the pacing's a bit wrong there but it, it throws it away in the second half and it's like, that's quite frustrating because yeah, that would actually be interesting like, I would like to see his struggles with that much more and it feels like the film's going to go there because his drill instructor and um, somebody else above him in command is like the kind of the same, like basically, it's like this horrible, dirty, probably commie um, with his pacifism and stuff. Uh, and then within about a minute, they've realized he can shoot really well. They're like, all oh, right, then we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've, that's more of a frustration than anything else. Uh, unfortunately, just for the rest of the film, I just, to be honest, I was quite bored by it. Uh, it's, it wasn't bad, but it's just, mm. I don't know. It's, there are too many kind of individual problems for me to recommend that film. Like, the casting's wrong and the age and stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. it's not bad. It's just also not good. <laughs> yeah, it's fair enough. Like I say, I, I can't say much more than it's solid. So make of that what you will. Yeah. Okay. 